To me, that's, that's just a, not a nice thing to do. None other than Canada's national treasure, Foresty Forest. If I'm not going to be going solo, then I'd probably need something something bigger. So, so one of the last things I was talking about regarding my minivan and and what kind of van build am I going to have? It wasn't done like the day before or the week it got posted. In some cases, there's there are always individuals that seem to drive extremely fast. If you haven't already known, if you haven't noticed, uh, the ceiling is something I'm extremely proud of. And well, hello there, everybody. One thing for sure, it's a very, very rainy day. And I, for one, actually don't mind it at all. I don't mind when it rains and stuff. I'm not a big fan of driving in the rain. It really depends if there's a lot of cars. Obviously, I'm not a big fan of it just because, you know, you increase your likelihood of getting into an issue. For example, stop somebody stopping immediately or something, somebody cutting in front of you. and. In some cases, there's, there are always individuals that seem to drive extremely fast beyond what the conditions would have you drive. So I kind of like driving when there's nobody around. Um, I'm using the this thing here, the, I think it's called, well, it's a mic, it's a USB-based mic. I think it's called a lavalier. I think that's what it's called. I'm actually not sure why it's called that, but I'm hoping it'll help carry my voice through to the video and this video th there's not much to it I just wanted to open up the conversation regarding uh, my YouTube and also uh, the videos I'm posting I think it's important for people to understand that uh, when I post a video it's not necessarily it's not necessarily it wasn't done like the day before or the week it got posted sometimes that happens but other times you know, I post it when I can or when I get a chance to actually, wow, it's really coming down now. Um, but when I get a chance to actually work on it, I do work full time. I, I'm in my van, I usually during the weekends, I travel. And at some point I will be traveling full time. There was a point where I pretty much full time in my van for a bit. And that was, that was really wonderful uh, in, in, in many ways. I got to see a, all kinds of places within Ontario, which is where I am. There's a lot of beautiful places here. But one thing I, I sort of want to do a bit more this year, uh, just because the timing for me these days, I don't have a whole lot of it because of all kinds of things from work to circumstances to literally I've got some personal projects I'm working on to better my life in many, many ways and also to plan for the big trip out west, man, I, I, I've been talking about that forever and I'm really, really hoping that I'll be able to, to go out there. I got some really good advice about cargo vans and minivans. And there's a video that I posted previously about you know, cargo van versus a minivan. And it, and it wasn't to sort of diminish any benefits from a cargo van or vice versa. I, I know everyone's situation is different. So it really is kind of a nebulous kind of subject or nebulous sort of competition. They're both totally different things. And depending on how you want to do this, you're going to choose either a cargo van or a minivan. But somebody did uh, chime in, uh, uh, interestingly enough, from my Instagram and they, they mentioned a few things which I think uh, sort of resonated with me a lot and also matched up with what, what I've always thought as well and I've included that in my videos. One of the things mentioned about uh, cargo vans was a carburetor and the idea went something like this that there unless you know how to sort of fix your, your van you want to pick up a van uh, without a carburetor. I would imagine most vans nowadays, at least the modern ones, are fitted with fuel injection systems. So that may not necessarily be applicable. But I think if you're going to be picking up a vintage style van, which I think they all look beautiful and they and fixed up properly, they just set off a, a, a wonderful vibe, an unbelievable vibe 
and I've seen some vintage vans yeah, and I'm thinking, wow, that would be really cool. But, you know, I would rather choose reliability over really cool, especially if I'm going to be driving across the prairie, like Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and different parts. Uh, what was mentioned to me was they had said that around that area, there, there isn't a whole lot of activity going on. So you could be driving and you could get stranded. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking of a a road in the States called Death Valley. I think that's what it is where there isn't a lot of activity going on. So, you know, imagine getting stuck in the middle of the prairies and no one's coming by for hours at a time, if any, and then anyone that does come by, they, they don't know how to help you out. So the, the advice was, unless you're pretty good mechanically, you, you may want to get a newer vehicle, new or newish vehicle. And I get that. Now, I mean, with enough YouTube, I could probably figure it out. But the other comment was, the other advice was that within those areas, sometimes the, there is no cell reception. There is no data at all. There are no cell towers. So you, you, you'd run into a, a dead spot. Not, nothing's happening. There's no way to communicate. So to stay safe, I would probably invest in a satellite phone or some types of system that in, a, in the case of an emergency, I'm able to, uh, to contact uh, somebody. I'm able to contact some help. And, and another thing that was brought up was in the event that what, someone gets stuck, I get stuck somewhere, CEA may not be able to get to you. Or if they get to you, you better have a really good plan because your towing bill would be astronomical. So those are a few things that were brought up. Aside from the from the obvious, for example, a cargo van obviously will will take up more fuel and gasoline to, to keep running and to keep driving versus a minivan. Uh, however, uh, the comfort level will definitely be much, much higher. So, and I think that's what I'm trying to look at, trying to grapple with is I, I, th I definitely would be much more comfortable in a cargo van just because sh space, uh, it's much more powerful and I, I def there would be more headroom. Granted, I'm not like a six foot person. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable in this van and there's a part of me that's thinking, well, you know, I spend most of my time outside of my van, except maybe winter where I, I like to be in here all nice and cozy, right? So but I would be driving around summertime. So the other possibility is get a, well, just redesign, get, get a new redesign or layout of my van. And I mentioned it in a previous post. Uh, the, my kitchenette, while I completely love my kitchenette, the kitchenette has been like sort of like a central part of my van where where I, I keep things, uh, I do a bit, bit of cooking. Granted, I, I actually don't cook on the kitchenette itself because I want more room. I want safety around when, if I ever have to use a burner inside my van, which I, I, there, there, I do have a, a video about, if you have to cook in your van, make sure you, you follow these things or at least be extremely safe. You know, one of, one of which is make sure you don't succumb to carbon monoxide. You have a carbon monoxide detector, but I do have a, a video about that. I like to cook outside of my van, or if I do cook inside of my van, I always have a side door open and very, very good airflow and ventilation. So I don't cook on my kitchenette. I, I cook away from it so that there's there's at least some some space between the different parts of the van. I don't want anything burning against it. And that's another thing. This is a very small space. And as a small space, there anything all can happen. So you know, as much as possible, I can't mention anymore, cook outside your van or cook with uh, electrical items. For example, a, a 12 volt oven, which I've got a couple of videos about that. Wow, it is just really, really windy here. 
You can't really tell from the side, but right in front of here, it's, visibility is very low. And I think the video cut off again because I ran out of room. Nothing new. I should use my other camera, but unfortunately, I can't use this USB mic with it, which I think is really helpful. Okay, so it was raining really, really hard, and I decided to sort of just pull over at the side and boil some water, and I'm gonna make myself some coffee, and the way I'm gonna be making my coffee is gonna be a bit different. I think I've showed it before. So there's my, my burner there, I'm just turning it off. And we'll open this up here, and you notice those, those are coffee grinds. So a real close-up of my van build. Everything here was built from found free gifted materials. And this one here, this coffee isn't a uh, pour over. It's actually instant coffee. And interestingly enough, it actually tastes pretty good. So that's what it looks like. It looks, it actually looks nice to me. And uh, it's got a bit of foam happening and it smells good. Now it's not as strong as what I normally make it, but it's gonna get me through this, this rain and I'm just gonna stir it obviously because I put some uh, some creamer in there, some coffee mate. Usually I'll put cream, but I, I didn't have any, so this one's pretty good. So one of the last things I was talking about regarding my minivan and you know traveling across over to the west and whether I'm gonna go for a cargo van or a minivan. I'm, at this point, I'm, I'm really, my heart is somewhat set on a cargo van. And be, just because it's going to be roomier, and I seem to think that it'll be much more comfortable, especially when I'm going to be full-timing in my van. And of course, of course, the other thing that I have to think about is, what am I going to do with this van? And I know the new van would definitely cost some money. And... What kind of van build am I going to have? Is it going to be similar to this one or a much leaner, leaner type of van build? This van build that I have, this, this mini van build that I have, it really, I mean, I, I put a lot of my, myself and my, my heart into this thing. And if you, if you haven't already known, if you haven't noticed, uh, the ceiling is something I'm extremely proud of because it was the one that caused me a lot of, I guess, gentle stress, if you, that's what you want to call it because I was kind of like ruminating over it, thinking, oh, should I put a ceiling? Should I do this? Should I do that? And I finally did it. And when I placed the ceiling, it just tied everything together. And I can't stop talking about it because I'm just, I'm, to this day, it's still one of the best things I did because it made the van so much more cozier, my minivan. And I'm not even sure if I'm going to get the same vibe with a cargo van. A cargo van is a different beast altogether. It's a different cat. And really for me, I, I probably will go really simple. I probably would go very, yeah, very, very basic. We wouldn't have all the styling, although that could change because I think if I'm, if I'm going to be spending a lot of time when I start going full time in a cargo van, especially when I'm traveling, right? I'd like it to be my home away from home. And this really is my home away from home. In many ways, it's my cabin on wheels, right? This, this is my cabin on wheels. And it's really comfortable. Solo traveler. And I think if, if I'm not going to be going solo, then I probably need something, something bigger. So something to keep in mind as I'm um, thinking about all this and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping really, oh, you know what else? I would probably also will need time to fix it up. So fixing it up would mean that I, I would need time to actually build it out as well. So once I get the cargo van, I'm, I'm just, th I'm thinking out loud here. Once I get the cargo van, and that's if I get a cargo van, I would need time to plan things out. I'll, otherwise, I just do, I'll just do a no build, right? And just go super, super simple or if I'm really productive and smart about this thing, maybe I'll be able to do a build very quickly. I've seen that being done. There was actually someone who built out their van, van build in their van build. And that would be, 
none other than Canada's national treasure, Forestie Forest. So we'll have a look at his video. He actually built out his, from a parking lot of all places, right? His van build in his van. Yeah, that, 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 that's next level. I, I don't think I'm at that level. But maybe, maybe I could try. You never know. Um, and maybe it would set the precedence in terms of, you know, how people build out their vans as well, especially in a very stealth way. You know, we all have a different reason why we're doing van builds, van life. Uh, I've got my reasons. And underneath all that, we all have other things that motivate us. Our motivations are different. But I think one thing I, I can say is the community has been just really amazing. Um, yes, everyone has, a majority rather, has been extremely friendly. And, and, I think it, and I think if you're part of the community or part of the group that is just like a troll, <laughs> then maybe you're not part of the group. Maybe you're just some outlander out there. Outlier, I think that's what they're called, right? You know, you, you, you know, there's different types of people. Like, you know, I think if you're going to post something that's contradictory, it has to be done in such a way from a viewpoint of improving the situation versus just rattling the cage and see what sort of pops out or, or what's, what, what, what gets revealed. I think to me, that's, that's just not a nice thing to do.